Welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Meet the Mega Agent series. Uh, it's continuing and, and very excited to talk with someone who I've had the pleasure to meet just recently. It, it seems like our paths have crossed uh, several times. I'm Rick Bosley, the team leader from Orlando, Florida, and Waterford Lakes. Uh, today is actually my three-year anniversary, so I'm vested with Kel Williams. I'm pretty excited for that. And uh, let's talk about an important person on the phone call, and that's Mark Ramey, also out of Orlando. Mark, can you hear us? Yeah, I sure can. Thanks so much for having me here. Fantastic. You bet. So, Mark, you and I first met just a couple of months back, because actually we were talking to, to Freddie, who's a friend of yours, who's also on the call here. Um, and then once I put two and two together, I realized that much prior to that, Milton James had also thrown your name out there, of just someone who he highly respected specifically for your discipline, your lead generation, and your prospecting. I believe you are, and correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of the Mike Ferry techniques with how you started your business, and now you're shifting that a little bit to, to a little more leverage. Uh, am I correct in that? That's correct. Yeah, okay. I started uh, coaching with Mike in 2004 and then switched over to MAPS uh, this year. Fantastic. So just so everyone else can get caught up with, with who you are in your story, do you want us to give us a cliff note version of your resume of, of when you got started in real estate? Uh, perhaps when you your struggles that you had early on, your early successes, and what you've learned throughout that time. Sure, absolutely. I started in real estate in two thousand two. Um, first uh, year in the business wasn't a full year. I think I did twelve transactions. Second year did uh, right at about thirty six, and then uh, two thousand four. I ran into. I was at at the time I was at Prudential, and I was I went to the Prudential convention. And I, I went and saw one of the speakers. His name was Mike Ferry. Um, just really impressed me with how on the level he was about the fact that you actually go to work every day um, to accomplish something in this business. And hold on, hold on. That's a that's a novel concept. I want you to repeat it. Make sure everyone heard it. What, what's what's the basic concept there? Uh, we have to show up for work every single day uh, in, in order to be successful in this business, and that was one of the things. For me, I mean, I watched my dad over 41 years. He was a truck driver. He woke up at 4 in the morning every day, came home at 8 o'clock at night. I mean, that rang with me. I, I watched someone work to raise me and my family. So, uh, and so uh, that really rang with me. And so I said, well, this guy, I don't think he's BSing anyone. Out of all the speakers that were there, he just rang with me. So um, I coaching in, 2000, in 2004. Uh, that year I did 50 transactions and then, grew from there. And then uh, when 2008 hit, um, you know, a, a lot of people were going after the REO accounts. And I, I had a big decision to make myself. Um, and I had a conversation with my coach. And I just decided that, that, you know, as people were chasing REO accounts, the best thing that I could do was to keep doing what I knew how to do well. And that was, um, I just came in the office every day and prospected. And I think that's what got me through the tough times. So. So from 2008, here so, today. so here you are today, and, and get us caught up to speed. Am I, am I pretty accurate there with your selling about 100 homes and 25% of those are listed expires or FISBOs? Uh, you know what? It's close. This year I'm going to end up with 88. My goal was to do 109 um, and did not hit it. Uh, and tw about, yeah, 25% is for sale by owners and expires combined. And of the 88, just so we can get an idea, do you have a team or are all 88 written under you with some administrative help? How does your structure of your organization look? Well, this is the first year that I've had a buyer's agent. Um, and up until uh, this year, it was just myself. It was myself, and uh, I had uh, two admin. Uh, one was a closing coordinator, and one was a listing coordinator. And then... Um, for, I would say from, I joined Keller Williams about five years ago, uh, so 2008. And when I came to Keller Williams, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I made was my ego allowed me to think that I knew it all because I was being coached. And the problem was is I didn't allow myself to see past my Mike Ferry blinders and, and where the potential lied and with having... Uh, you know, having a buyer's agent, um, you know, it just, the, I kept shifting gears. I would go from getting listings 
then I would work with buyers. Then I would go to getting listings, and then I would work with buyers. And what I only, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm a slow learner because I only figured it out in the last year and a half. <laughs> but that really, shifting those gears um, really kept me from my potential. And um, what I noticed is that the agents, as I would go to events, including Keller Williams events and Mike Ferry events, over time I noticed that the agents that are doing 15, 20, 25 listings in a month time, all they're doing is one job, mm -hmm. and that's going after listings. So they're focusing on one thing. Isn't that interesting? You just all probably, many of us heard of a book recently about that. And um, so I took that to heart, and um, uh, about a year no, it was two years ago at Megacamp. I heard Gary Keller say from the stage, um, all you agents who have spent the last six, seven years learning how to lead generate, now you need to spend the next six, seven years learning how to identify, um, train, lead, and motivate talent. Yeah. And I, you know, I took that as he was speaking to me literally because I had just spent the last six, seven years uh, learning how to lead generate. And my, in my business, I felt that I was truly reaching a ceiling. So that's, and then, I, and then in that same mega camp, I went to a mastermind with Tony DeCello. And Tony DeCello said, you know, what Gary said from the stage is true. And by the way, the way that you learn how to train, lead, and motivate is take recruit select. And so I took, uh, I immediately called my staff and said, book me on the next flight to Denver, Colorado, and I took Recruit Select uh, in October of 2011 from Mark Willis. And wow, I was going to ask who your instructor was, because we teach that. However, Mark Willis has quite a much better resume than I do. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you know what I, what, what, um, uh, I learned in that mastermind from um, – Tony DeCello, and you know, of course, I'll never repeat this. I guess this is being recorded, but Tony said, Mark Willis is the best. Don't tell anybody they ever said that. <laughs> well, he is the president of our company, so I guess that has some merit to it. Right. And what I learned in that in Recruit Select is that I actually I made the wrong first hire. I hired the, so I had to literally I had to come back and throw a stick of dynamite into my business and blow it up. And I had to de hire <clears throat> and my first hire. And then I had to look at and understand how I could grow with buyer's agents. And I was terrified of that. So anyhow, that's where I'm at right now. And so we took on a buyer's agent last year for the first time, about halfway through the year. And that's what's pushed my production over. And, and I think very easily um, next year we're looking at uh, 130 transactions. We're looking at 20% growth on top of this year plus. Congratulations. Fantastic. So I, I heard a couple of things out there, and I know that I dangled a giant carrot of expired and, and FISBO. So I'm going to get into that meat of, of that prospecting that you learned because you did learn how to lead generate. However, a lot of your history, the big turning points in your career was when you got a coach or when you went to a – actually, it starts off with a major event, seeing Mike Ferry. Yep. And then having a coach – and then again, major events listening to Gary Keller and listening to Tony DeCello. And then flying out and not waiting conveniently for a training. How important has the coaching and these, these national conventions been to your business? Um, it's the reason that I'm still in the business today. It's that important. So what do you tell people who say, yeah, but I can't afford the $1,500 it's going to cost me? Well, um, I realize that it is, uh, it, you know, it can be a very daunting, scary, um, you know, question as to whether you do something like that or not. And in fact, in 2004, I was scared to death. I called, uh, I called my life partner. I said, "Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm thinking about spending a thousand dollars a month and getting a coach." And you know, at that time, I was, I was very fortunate. He just, he supported that. Um, I think it's one of the best investments you can make. I think the question that I would ask anybody on this call, especially if you have children, the valuable thing is, is you know, we're all working, and I think part of our goals is to, you know, would be to support those children. I don't have kids myself, but I have a niece, and she's very important to me. And so part of my goals has been to help support her. And so if we had kids, and our kids were, you know, were to come to us, 
with this concept of, of having education to, to further their, you know, themselves, we wouldn't probably, none of us on this call would think twice for a second of saying, yeah, sign up and I'll find a way to pay for it. You know, we'll make it happen. Right. And, and so, you know, when you approach it from that aspect, you know, have you ever been on an airplane where they have the announcement at the beginning, I'm sure we've all been on it, where they say, in the event of an accident, oxygen masks will fall from the ceiling. And who do they tell you to put the oxygen mask on first? Take care of yourself first. Yourself, exactly. So the question that, you know, was very apparent to me as I reviewed these thoughts, I said, all right, well, if I'd be willing to support my niece, if I'd be willing, if we're willing to support our children in further growth and education, why wouldn't we support ourselves? Yeah, who's that start and with? That just, yeah. Absolutely, I love that. You know, and I, I take that, and, and I'm blessed and fortunate that my office is able to, you know, send me to a lot of these things to bring back education. Yet what I've learned is, has grown me so much in that. With coaching, what do you get out of coaching? Because that's a big investment. And I know that we have some coaching here, and I do some free coaching. It's group sessions and productivity coach. You're writing a check every month. What does your coach do for you? Um, well, I, I get um, accountability, mindset, and I get to look at my business in a way that I've never looked at it. For example, you know, I, I have a coach right now who, um, you know, this person is doing way more business than I am. And so, you know, I completely respect what they're telling me because, you know, they've been down the path. I get models and I get ideas outside of, you know, where I've been. I get to understand what I don't know. Gotcha. Love that. Okay, so let's get into um, some of your discipline, some of your prospecting, some of your techniques. And uh, again, you and I haven't spoken, so as much as you want to divulge as little, I'm okay with that because I love you just sharing your story and motivating people here. Tell us about a, a typical day in Mark Ramey's life. Well, um, I, uh, I'm a natural riser. I don't use an alarm. I'm pretty fortunate that way. Um, and I, you know, usually I'm, I'm up by... Uh, 5.30, and um, to me, the first half hour of my day is, is very valuable. That's the time when I, I usually will write out a gratitude list, a list of the things I'm grateful for, so it puts my mindset in the right spot immediately. I'll do something physical. Uh, for me, it's yoga, um, and then I am just getting prepped. I come into the office. I'm in the office by 7.30. I do role play uh, every day. And then I'm on the phones by 8 a.m. Okay, um, so that's that's another one of those novel concepts. Number one, you said earlier was show up to work. Number two was role play. You've been selling real estate since 2002. You sold how many homes last year by yourself? 60. Uh, last year, 70, 79. 79 by yourself, and you still role play every day from 7:30 to 8. Tell me about that. Yeah. Yes. Um, well. I mean, you know, our skills are something that that occur over time. Um, you know, it, just if I look back on my skills just just six months ago or just a year ago, I'm still learning new skills. And I, in order for me to keep them sharp, I mean, one of the things that I watch that I find very interesting is, if, for example, Tiger Woods. You know, when he finishes a round of golf, um, you know, what does he do? He doesn't go to the clubhouse and start knocking back, you know, drinks or anything. He goes out and he hits more golf balls. <laughs> he, he actually goes out and practices more. And so my goal this year is to be as efficient as I can with my business so that I could spend more time, you know, w with doing the things that I want. You know, for me it's yoga, spending time with my partner and with family. For me to be efficient, I have to be at the top of my game. And so by me increasing my skills, that causes me to increase, increase my efficiency, and that allows me to do more in less time or in the time that's allotted. So, yeah, I role play every single day so that I can keep my skills honed in. Who do you role play with? Um, I have role play partners that um, I will find at events. Uh, I find them at my ferry events. Um, you know, right now I'm involved in Bold. I've got a role play partner from Bold um, that's on my team. I also role play with my buyer's agents. 
Um, I role play with um, other agents from around the country. I, I usually look for agents that are doing more and better than I am, and I seek them out and I look to role play with them. So I love that because oftentimes people say, yeah, I'll role play. They look to the left, look to the right, and they find a convenient role play partner, yet you choose people who are better than you to keep yourself sharp with that. Because 7.30 a.m. is a very short list of people who I've come across who is willing to be at the office to role play. So you have to find somebody who's equally as motivated as you are. So kudos to you and all your partners over there. Exactly. Um, it's finding people that are equally as motivated. And I would like to say one other thing. I mean, yeah, finding people that are, are doing more business than you is important. And at the same time, what I've learned is finding people that aren't, they're doing less business than me and maybe aren't as effective, what I'm noticing is, is both those role play partners are valuable. One teaches me and the other allows me to teach them. And as I teach them, I learn it myself more. Sure. So it's both is valuable. Love that. So 8 a.m., you are on the phones. Now, doesn't the, the law say 8.30 or is it 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. you're going. Okay. So tell us about a typical day after 8 o'clock. You start prospecting. Who are you calling? Uh, I start with expireds, uh, the fresh expireds. Go into the fresh expireds, and then I go to the FISBOs. And then uh, from there, I call uh, past client center of influence. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much mainly who I'm calling. Do you keep a pretty client. accurate log of your conversion rates? Yes. What, what would you say? Or how long do you call for? From eight until when? Uh, I call from eight until eleven, and from eleven to eleven thirty, I do uh, lead follow up. And sometimes it'll, I'll even run uh, lead follow-up until noon. Okay. So in those three hours of lead generation, how many dials are you getting in? Uh, well, dials, uh, I would say, I could tell you I'm making 30, 30 contacts a day, 25 to 30 contacts a day. Okay. Like today, today I'm looking at my dialer. I um. I have uh, 17 contacts for the day, and it was 108 calls. Okay. So, you know, I've got some contacts to make up. I'm going to hit, you know, 30 today before I go home. Mm-hmm. And that was from 8 to 11. So you're, you're getting – and it, is that important? Do you look at those numbers often? And if so, what do you do with them? Well, it's valuable for me for business planning. For example, last month I received 10 listings. I was very blessed to receive 10 listings. And – I made roughly uh, 330, I made 337 contacts. So I know, based on those numbers, that, let's see, 337 divided by 10, every 33, 34 contacts, I get a listing. So that motivates me. It tells me what I need to do in order to accomplish something. And these are all, not all, but that's 3% conversion rate. So you know you've got that 3% conversion there. And with your goal of being 130, so it's going to be 13 a month, right? Then you get to, I guess it's 13 total sides. So 3% conversion rate expires. Now, you're in bold right now, and so are 95 other people. And with bold, you guys get an arch dialer in the arch list, right? If they give you expires and for sale by owners. So I've heard some people who have say, said, yeah, but everybody's calling them, so I'm not going to. Have, how have you come across that? Well, I, I just hope everybody keeps saying that. <laughs> you know what I'm noticing is that you're calling between 8 and 9 o'clock expired, so you don't hear that because you're the first one to call. Well, and the other thing, too, that I would say is, um, you know, Rick, uh, my biggest competition in the morning is my own mind. It's not any other agent that's out there. And, um, you know, there's plenty for everybody. That's the way I think. Not, I'm not saying that everybody should think that way, um, but as soon as I, when I, as soon as I started knowing that for myself, I didn't worry that other people were calling. You know, I just, I just took every. I like to take every call, one at a time. Make good connections with people. Um, come up from a place of contribution, and as long as we're doing that, you know, the results can happen. 
long as we're consistent. You learn to think in abundance, not in scarcity. And, yeah, exactly. And that's huge. Um, you know, I look at that, and that's one of the things that Keller Williams are really neat about. Our office here in Waterford Lakes, we are right now third in volume on the entire board. And I think your guys wow, are, are, are right there in the top five. And yet we have less than 2% market share. And we're third. That means there's 98 plus percent more business out there that we can still get. And we're third out of 2,000 brokerages. That's a huge opportunity. Yeah. So yes, think in abundance there. So I'm, I'm looking at your numbers. 10 listings and 300 plus contacts. So that's 3%. How discouraging is it to have 97 no's? Do you get um, it? How do you overcome that? Over time, it, it's just, I, you know, I have a, a philosophy, and I didn't, this didn't come from me, but Mike Ferry has always told me that I am paid in direct relation to the amount of rejection that I'm willing to deal with and accept. And so hearing that, it just taught me to just be okay with it. And one of my favorite words in this business is just next. <laughs> next. Next, yeah, next. Yeah. It, it's funny when agents get discouraged of a call going bad, it's because they're not making enough calls. And if you get discouraged that a deal fell apart, it's because they're not closing enough deals. Because when you have something to go next to, it doesn't just hurt as much. When it's your only one for the day, it's a little painful. So you said you are paid in direct relation to the number of rejections that you're able to take? Yeah, in direct relation to the amount of rejection that I'm willing to accept. Amount of rejection. I'm, willing to, I'm writing that down. You're willing to accept. I love that. And actually, I just mentioned that today to one of my agents that if you're not hearing no, you're not doing enough contacts. Because not everyone's going to be a slam dunk. So you just made me feel smart. So... Let's keep going on conversion rates. People can set a barometer a little bit because you know that you can make 337 contacts. Uh, probably, what, one out of 10 will be an accurate number? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Uh, uh, for Clarify that for me. Help me understand. What well, you're I mean, let's do numbers oh, again. Yeah. Today, you said you made 17 contacts on 108 dials, right? Yeah. So that's a 15%. So now you have 15 out of 100. So you've got to dial 100 names to make yep. 15 contacts. And of those 15, you're going to get 3% conversion rate. So are we looking at 200 dials as a listing? Uh, 2,000 dials? Well, yeah, I guess. I, I, I use a dialer, so I, I don't really often think in terms of uh, how many dials I have to make. I usually just think in terms of contacts. So I'm sorry. I appreciate you clarifying that. Yeah, it's no. that way. Yeah. Well, I, I just did the math, um, and I apologize for everyone out there. I speak in numbers, so this is where my mind went. It's 0.45%, so about a half percent conversion. So for okay. every 1,000 dials, you'll get your listing. Okay. Or 500 dials, you get your listing. That's what it is. And now you can do your economic model even more. That's an important yeah. number to know because how many people out there are making 500 dials to get to your contacts? And I think it's out there because what I want to emphasize, exactly what you said in the first two minutes, is you're showing up and you're doing the work. And you can't get these numbers unless you show up and do the work. So I want to talk about some preparation because oftentimes I think a bigger struggle with people than time blocking is having – who to call or having the systems in place to call. Can you tell me about what programs you use to get you the information? Does your assistant pull it up for you? Or how are you staying efficient? So at 7.30, you're sharp. You're role-playing until 8. And at 8 o'clock, you're dialing. Who sets that up for you? How do you? Who do you pay? I have uh, li my listing coordinator, Mary Annie. She, um, uh, she inputs my numbers for me before I even come into the office in the morning. She does it remotely from home. And so... Those numbers are put into my dialer so that all I have to do is come in and hit go. And then I start dialing. And where does she get that list from? That list comes from, uh, there's a couple different sources. I know Arch is providing us numbers during bold. Then there's Red X. 
And there's another one um, that I've been using uh, called um, Vulcan 7. Yep. So as a single agent who might not have leverage in, in where you were when you first started in 2004 when you started coaching, what's the best process? What did your day look like then to remain efficient and put on purpose and on point? Um, get the numbers. Uh, just make sure that you wake up and have them ready in time to be on the phone at a time. See, the morning schedule is key. If, if Even Gary and Mike Ferry tells us this. Gary Keller tells us this. If we can get our morning down where you know, we have our lead gen time in place, then everything else should fall into place. So if you, you don't have an assistant, then I would just say make sure that you're, you've got the numbers in place by the time you want to start prospecting. Because the mind will play some games with us. And it'll say, oh, gosh, I don't have the numbers. And then it'll take a half hour figuring out the numbers. Well, if you intended to start at 8 and you don't start getting your numbers till 8, well, then you're not until 8.30, possibly 9, with mm -hmm. other distractions. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really key to just have your numbers in place before you start, which right now, I mean, Arch is emailing them to us, uh, which is awesome. So you've got those. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I would say just get your numbers in place to, on your own to begin with. Set up there. Uh, I had heard from Dana Kikoska this last mastermind I went to in September that your day starts the night before. Yeah. Because if you can, people say, well, I, I don't wake up until then. Well, why not? Because I don't go to bed until then. Well, go to bed earlier to wake up earlier to get your kids off of school earlier so you can do what you've got to do to be prepared. So yep, Exactly. And, and you, you break that down. Um, let's do a couple role plays if that's good with you. You okay. want, want to do a couple practice role play? Um, anyone on the phone right now who would love to be a role play partner, go ahead and type in question me, and I'll unmute you right now if you have access. Just type in me. I want to I role play. Raise your hand here. There's a lot of chickens out there. They're not wanting to do it. Oh, we'll learn together. Come on, it's, chickens. I'm not gonna, I promise I won't bite. I promise. <laughs> Let's just have some fun. Uh, all right, I'm going to do someone who I know is willing to do this. Paul Kelly, are you out there? Um, yeah, but let me get my headset in. <laughs> I know Paul, he loves to role play as well and, and is very big on scripts. So, um, Paul, can B, you hear me? We can hear you pretty well. You hear him, Mark? All right, all right, forget the headset. Okay, I'm game. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Paul, be uh, be tough on them, but be realistic with them. So have at it, guys. You expired listing. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Paul. Uh, yes, yeah, speaking. Hi, Paul. My name's Mark. I'm a real estate agent here in the area with Keller Williams. Was calling about your home on 123 Main Street. I'm sure you figured out the home came up on our computer as an expired listing was calling to see when you planned on interviewing an agent to actually get it sold. <laughs> uh, I thought I had one, but he didn't do it. Ouch. So he didn't get it sold. Paul, I'm sorry to hear that. If you had sold the home, where were you moving to next? We we're going to go to Melbourne. Melbourne. That's exciting. What's taking you to Melbourne? Uh, my daughter's there, and she's got a new baby, and we're going to help out and kind of thinking about retirement and stuff like that. Wow, congratulations on your new granddaughter. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. And so ideally, Paul, how soon did you want to be near your daughter with the grandchild in Melbourne? Ideally, what time? Well, you, I'm, you know... I, well, yesterday, of course, but, you know, it didn't sell. I don't think the market's any good. What I'm probably going to do, I think, is probably put it out for rent. Okay. So at this point, it sounds like you're considering renting the property. Um, ideally, is, is that ideally what you'd want to do, or would you prefer to have the property sold? What would serve you most? We'll definitely have it sold. Okay. Paul, I'm curious. You know, at this point, if you knew... Um, you know, if you could be assured that you could sell your home just because of better timing, is that something that you'd still be interested in? I don't know. What do you mean by timing? Well, Paul, gosh, our marketplace has completely changed in the last six to eight months. And if you could actually benefit from that, 
and which would cause your home to sell. I mean, would you still want to sell? Yeah, I always, yeah, I do want to sell. I don't know. I understand about the timing thing, though. Okay. Well, you know, may I offer a suggestion? Yeah. Okay. Would it benefit you to know realistically what the highest paying retail buyer would be willing to pay for a home like yours? And then what the highest market rents are for this area as well? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, good. I don't, why don't I do some research? And when I do this research, I'd like to show you two things very specifically and clearly. Number one, what that highest retail buyer would be willing to pay you for your home, and net net bottom line, what you'd put in your pocket. And then number two, specifically the steps that I'm using to help sellers be successful in accomplishing that. Is that information that you think could help you? Well, I'm interested in, yeah, well, yeah, as long as you're just not trying to get my, you know, get me to sell the house through you. You know what, Paul? Um, I think in this case you've expressed to me that you still might rent the home, so I, I want to bring some rental information as well so that you can make the best decision for yourself and your family. Would that be okay? Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah, I have to okay. admit. Okay, good. Well, Paul, if we were to get together, if we should meet, are afternoons or evenings better for you? Um, afternoons. Afternoons, terrific. Well, I've got some time today, this afternoon at 4, or would tomorrow afternoon at 2 be better for you? Um, 2 o'clock tomorrow. 2 o'clock tomorrow, okay. I did have a 4 tomorrow, but we can do tomorrow at 2. I've got that as available as well, so thank you kindly. Okay, thanks. Great. Now, Paul, before I come out, there's just a handful of questions that I would need to ask so that I could be most prepared and make sure that we're being most efficient with your time. Do you have just a moment for me? Sure. Okay, great. And then I would go into a prequal script. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Paul, what, what did you hear there, Paul? Where, and I was taking diligent notes, so I'm going to kind of go through the things that I heard, but I'd love to hear what you heard as you're... Well, you know, and I'm, I'm in bold, so, you know, I'm thinking of the coming from contribution, and he, and he heard about the renting, and he's going to give me some value in giving me some, you know, rental prices, and that's what's important to me because I probably don't know a clue about what right. the and, – and so that's enough to make me want to see him and to know that he's going to do research and uh, give me – some valuable information, so that was key. Awesome. So I'm going to mute you here, Paul, um, unless there's anything else, because I'm going to go over some notes, Mark, that I heard, and, and let me know if this is intentional. It sounds like you pretty much go down the same path. Paul, thanks for being uh, vulnerable there. No problem. Thank you, Paul. So you got, you got right off the bat, when do you intend to interview an agent to get it sold? That sounds like it's pretty much your, your token opener for this. Um, right after that, went and tested motivation. If you were to sell it, where would you be going? Now you're testing motivation. You're finding out what is the urgency, right? You're testing that urgency? Yes. Where, why, and when. Where, why, when. Okay, so why is that important to you? My granddaughter's out there. You built some rapport. Fantastic. Congratulations. Built a relationship. And then exactly right, I wrote down motivation timeline of when. Um, so what would you say if someone said, you know what, not a huge deal, I can sell it if it would be great, if not, not a huge deal, I'm, I'm happy to stay here. Do you have it, something to overcome that? Paul's pretty motivated. Um, yeah, I mean, he said he wanted to be there yesterday. Right. So, um, you know, are, so are you asking me if someone says it's not a big deal if I sell it now or whatever? So if we were to re-roll play that and say, my daughter's out there, would love to be near her, when would you like to do it? You know, Melbourne's not all that far away. I still see her twice a month, so I don't want to give my house away. It was more of just a concept if we could get what we were asking for. Okay. No, I got that. So I guess at this point, um, Rick, what's most important to you about selling your home? Is it about actually getting near your new granddaughter and your daughter in Melbourne, or is it actually about the amount of money that you're going to put in your pocket? Well, I've got to make sure I clear it. I'm not going to do a short sale, and I have enough for a down payment. So I do have, as much as I'd love to be out there, I do have some, some parameters I need to meet. Okay, got it. So it sounds, I'm, I'm imagining by you saying that you need a certain amount of money 
for this move to make sense to you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. May I offer a suggestion? Sure. So if I was to do some research and determine realistically what the highest paying retail buyer would be willing to pay for a home like yours and share that information with you so that you know where the numbers are coming in and net net bottom line what you would receive, would that be helpful information for you to have? Love it. And I'll push time out because you got me right down where you got Paul anyway. So what I'm hearing you did is with every seller, it's pretty more times than not, what's going to be important for them is their bottom line. And then you go into the question with, if I could tell you what the highest retail bidder would bid for your house. So you always have the same transition. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, you know, in this, in this case, it, I learned from asking the question, you know, what's most important about selling your home for you? Is it getting near your daughter or is it the money? Right. And I had to find that out. And once you answered that, it, you know, it, without a certain amount of money, it didn't matter that you wanted to be near your daughter. You needed that money in order to make the move. And that's when I went right into under, you know, helping you understand what, you know, what that dollars and cents would look like. So let's just do the latter. You know what? Uh, being near my daughter is the most important. My house is paid off and, and I just need to get there because she's a single mother and she needs help. Wow. So ideally, how soon do you want to start helping her? Yeah, right now I'm commuting three days a week anyway, so I'm already helping her. Oh, oh. Three days a week. That's like uh, how long of a drive is it? Hour 15 each way. An hour and 15 minutes. So you're an hour. That's two hours. It's uh, two hours and 30 minutes each day. Seven and a half hours a week about. That's seven and a half hours a week. In, okay, so seven and a half hours a week that if you lived in Melbourne right now, you'd be spending that time with your daughter and your granddaughter as opposed to commuting. Correct. Wow. Okay. How soon do you want that commute to stop? <laughs> as soon as I started it. <laughs> okay, good. Well, may I offer a suggestion, Rick? Sure. I mean, if you knew that by simply changing agents and taking a more aggressive approach that you'd actually end your commute within the next 30 to 60 days, would you be open to finding out how that could be real for you? Well, what are you going to do different than my last guy? That's a great question. And, you know, I'd like to go over that with you. If we were to get together for me to share that information with you, if we were to meet, our afternoons or evenings better for you? So go right into close again. So afternoon, okay. Um, you've got this down pat, so I love hearing it because I don't do it all that well, and I'm going to keep going down what I, what I kept hearing um, and let me know if I'm on point or not. You do a great job of clarifying and repeating what I said to make sure. The approval is, yeah, that's key. So people out there listening right now, notice what he was doing. So what I'm hearing you saying is that, repeats what I said, not only build a rapport, you're getting me used to saying yes, and you're, you're showing them that you know how to listen, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way that we can, that we can have rapport on the phone. Um, there is a, a form that I start off my day with every day, and, and Milton knows this. Freddie has seen this form. Others of you have seen this form that have um, prospected with me. It's called your personal goal reaching room. And one of the things that it tells me on the form is that when we're on the phone, 7% of communication is words, 55% is body language, and 38% is tonality. So we lose a lot of our communication on the phone. Yeah. Tonality repeating an approval is the quickest way for us to get into rapport. Absolutely. So everyone out there, repeat and, and clarify and understand So to get that. Um, acknowledge and appreciate. Whatever objection that is, you know, I can appreciate where you're coming from. I, I see why that might be frustrating for you. And then you overcome that objection. You did three or four trial closes in there. Would you still want to move? So he's saying, yes, I still want to move. Uh, would it benefit you if you could see the highest retail buyer? You're not asking. Um, the if we were to meet, that way you're not going for the close yet. Tell me what's what's important about all those trial closes. Um, well, it it's it's leading to 
uh, it's leading to the appointment. You know, it's it's it really it's it's coming from value. I'm offering something as opposed to saying, well, can I come over? Can I show you what I can do differently? <laughs> I'd like to show you what I'm doing differently than other agents. How many times did I say I in that statement? Sure. You know, it's it, it, it's not about me. Um, essentially, it's got to always be about them. One of my favorite concepts is uh, I visualize, and my coach gave this to me, is I visualize everyone that I'm speaking to as if they have the words MMFI stamped on their forehead. MMFI. Make me feel important. Mm. Gotcha. Love so, that. So that it's you know none of these calls are about me. They're always they always have to be about them. Something else you do very well. May I offer a suggestion? What's what's why do you do that? Why don't you just come out and say it? May I offer you a suggestion? Well, one of the things that I've learned from Mike Ferry, one of the biggest things, is that selling is not telling. Selling is asking a series of questions that lead the client to a desired outcome. And so I could tell somebody something. Well, we should meet. I mean, I'll, I'll say both of them differently, and you tell me which is more comfortable to you. Rick, we should meet so I can show you what I can do to get your home sold. Or I'm telling. Yeah. Or, Rick, you know, I can appreciate your frustration. May I offer a suggestion? Sure. Would it benefit you to know what the highest paying retail buyer would be willing to pay for a home like yours? Absolutely. That's that no-brainer trial. Yeah. Now, that was, two, that was two questions versus just telling somebody something. Mm -hmm. Love the, that. The person that, is in, the, the person that is in control of any situation is the one that is asking questions. If I, one thing that I learned from Mike Ferry it was that. Say that Ask again for people. Question. Ask the questions. All right, I would love to yeah. do a, is your for sale by owner script much different, or does it wrap up in the same thing? Would you say it would be worth it's listening gonna be, to? It's going to be it's it's going to be similar. And here's what I would say to everyone. All right, there there are um, certain things that you have to know, and there are certain parts of a script that are very important. Essentially, um, there are different for sale by owner scripts that are out there. But what's most important is where, why, and when. I need to know that. That is key. That's why I would use any script. And then. The other question that I'm going to ask while I'm myself, while I'm on the phone with the clients, is: Is this someone that I want to work with for the next two months? <laughs> That's a good yeah. point. Because when I learn where, why, and when, which is their motivation, and when I learn, you know, the answer to: Is this someone that I want to work with the next two months? Then I know if I want to go out and meet with them. See, to me, these scripts are pre-qualifying scripts for me to learn if they are the right client for me. Love that. So you, you've got some rules, where, why, when. What are some other general cold calling rules some people could learn to live by? We're hearing ask questions. Selling's not telling. It's asking questions to get the desired results. Where, why, when, test approve. motivation. What was another one? Repeat and approve. Repeat and approve. Another guideline there. Okay. Yep. M mirror and match tonality. Because we know tonality is fifty five percent of oh, thirty eight percent of communication. Right. Um, be excited. You know, make sure that you're not a bump on a log. Your energy has to be there. You've got to be enthusiastic. Do you, um, do you stand up when you regenerate? I do. I stand up. Um, when you're at the end of your communication, you want to make sure you use a downswing. Have you taken language of sales before? Uh, no, I haven't. But I took um, I took NLP for uh, I'm a slow learner. I took five semesters of NLP. <laughs> and what's, <laughs> five what's NLP? From Matthew Ferry. From Matthew Ferry. So it was very similar. Okay. And this was kind of neat. If you guys are thinking about coaching, there are a lot of different great coaching programs out there. And one thing Dan Kikoska, the president of MAPS, shared with is they're all right, so long as it's specific to you. And what's kind of unique and neat about MAPS 
is it's a hybrid and a mixture of all the different backgrounds from Zig Ziglar to Tony Robbins to Mike Ferry to Brian Buffini and they just kind of have different people and then it specializes so if you're looking into it and you want to look into maps they have some people like Mark who have been trained or who are grown up if you will through Mike Ferry through maps and then you can also switch out there so um, yeah fantastic. Can I share some games can I share some games that I play with myself that Please. really help keep me in the right mindset yeah um, of course, I have a contact log that I keep every day. Um, and one of the games that I like to play is uh, the thanked me for my call game and answered all my questions game. And what that means is, is anytime someone thanks me for a call, I, I record that. And I record that on a piece of paper, and that's a win. Okay, Whether something happened or not, someone thanked me for the call. And what it does is it gets me in the mindset of coming from contribution. Even if it is at the end of the call saying, you know what, I, perhaps I, I just spoke to someone who just lost their house to foreclosure. And I call them and they say, it's not our house anymore. It just went back to the bank. Oh, wow, ouch. You know what, I wish you much prosperity going forward. I certainly wish you the best. And then that person just says, wow, thank you. I take the energy of that gratitude, that feeling, into my next call. And, so, and I record that thank you as a win. And then answered all my questions game is, well, have they answered every question that I've asked them? And if they do, I tick off a little mark on my paper, and that's a win too. And it's just a fun way to keep me in process, consistently in process, as I'm on these calls. And that kind of goes back to how you handle your no's, because they're not no's, they're just not yet's. That's yeah. right, exactly. And the little wins in there. Um, as, as we're wrapping up the call here, I want to open it up for anybody else, maybe with a specific objection that you've recently handled or with a mindset concern that you might have or just something you want to ask Mark. I want to open up the next 10 or 15 minutes. So go ahead and type in the question area there. Um, I want to ask you because this is a key part of it. We didn't go into it. Your follow-up because staying consistent, staying follow-up, we don't, anyway, I can't say we don't. It's difficult to call up, get a list, and go on an appointment. And often, more times, it's going to be a relationship that over time, you get it. Tell me about your follow-up. What do you do with the documentation? What is your contact manager? What's your system to make sure you stay in touch? Okay. Um, well, I've been coached that 70% of my appointments comes from lead follow-up. So, you know, that's a huge amount of business. So the value of that is key. And I essentially have a very simplified system. Um, I have um, an accordion file, 1 through 31. It's below my desk. And so if someone says, or if I determine that I've got to call someone back, uh, let's say on the 5th of December, well, that I put them into that slot on the accordion file directly below my desk. You can get those at Office Max. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm doing follow-up, um, you know, I uh, have also my, my staff, or we have a file that's January through December. And so let's say I get someone that says, you know what, there's no way, and I determine through questions, that I'm not going to list or do anything until February because of X. And that X is a condition. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. So then, okay, great. Well, you know, why don't I get your, I use this script. This is a great script. And if somebody wants it, you know, you can get it from me. You know, as I'm speaking to people in your area, many of them are requesting information in terms of our area and in terms of pricing. And if you have an email address, I can make sure you get those updates as well. So that's how I get email addresses from people. So then this person's not doing anything from until February. So then I put them into the February slot and I don't think about them again. I don't even know about them until February happens. And then that February file opens up, and it's like Christmas. I'm like, wow, these are all these leads that said they were going to do something. <laughs> and then, then I do follow up with them, and that's exciting to me. Right. And then, uh, then the other is that I've, I've only developed since a year ago. I was at Mega Camp at, um, uh, I'm sorry, a year prior. I've been using it, Mega Camp, uh, Mega Camp 2012. In the mastermind with Tony DiCello, Jeff Clinton was in that mastermind. and He's in Ocean City, New Jersey, and he'll do 250 transactions this year. And one of the biggest things that I got from him and also um, 
Greg Harrelson, who will do a thousand transactions out of South Carolina, um, is that they both keep with them their top seven listing leads all the time. And so what I've done is I've created a Word document where I have my top seven listing leads on one piece of paper. It's got their name, phone number, property address, email, uh, and any notes. And it, it's, it's the ones, these people are someone that is willing to list uh, their property within the next seven to ten days. And my job, specifically, is to get these people off that list in the next seven to ten days, either by listing with me or they don't do something. And then I, I have to remove their name in seven to ten days. Right. Or, or that's it. They just got to get off that list. And there's only seven people that are allowed on that list. And what that's done is it really has helped me hone in on the people that are going to do something. Because it's so easy with lead follow-up to get caught up with the stack in the pile and what I, what, or get overwhelmed by the stack in the pile. And what I, what I realized is as long as I keep those top seven people in front of me all the time, man, they're right there with me in the car. I have no excuse to not call them because they're all on one sheet of paper. Bam, I can call them. I could be you know, out having dinner and I, don't, you know, I could just say, excuse me for a moment, go make one quick phone call and send an appointment. It's just so easy to have that list with me. So it's with you everywhere. I love yeah. that. And that accordion file, uh, my coach, I'm a MAPS coach with Shannon Steer, she shared with me the same thing. So a couple of agents might have that familiar because it, it does work. Do you utilize anything electronically with eEdge or with campaigns or top producer? Do you utilize that or is it all paper trail? I've been using eEdge. Um, we converted over from top producer to eEdge. And what I'm using in eEdge is um, I learned a trick, and this has been helpful for me, is when you've got someone that really seems like they're going to do something, uh, in eEdge, you know, I call, I have a, a list in my eEdge that's called absentee owners and also my A, B, and C clients. And so I'll, I focus primarily on the A's, B's, and absentee owners. And um, so in eEdge, when you make a note or when you put a reminder, if you make them a hot prospect, if you categorize them as hot, uh -huh. then what will happen is, is you'll get a reminder and that reminder does not go away. Whenever I go to my dashboard, uh, in the edge that morning, it shows me who I'm supposed to be calling. Awesome. So if someone prefers the electronic way, that's a way of doing it also. And, and I think both are needed because sometimes electronic complicates things, what I've found. However, it's nice for the long term. Uh, a couple questions in here, and actually you already know them. So, Paul, I've got you unmuted again. You've got a question. Yeah, Mark, do you track the number of referrals you get from expired listing clients? And if you do, is it higher or lower than the number of referrals you might get from like uh, other sources like your database or your sphere of influence or you know other past clients that 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 you've done with done deals with wow that's a good question um i have not gone to that next level of tracking in other words you know once an expired sells or for sale by owner sells they become part of my past clients uh, i have not broken that out. I'm sorry. I, I, I guess uh, it's just a whole other level of uh, identifying numbers. No, I haven't, Paul. Okay. Well, that's and a good question because you you're, you're looking to see if you're that much more of a hero and if they're more likely to because they've seen two sides of the fence and they know how green your grass is, if you will. Um, so is that what you're getting at, Paul, with being a hero? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because he's really doing someone whose house doesn't sell. They're dejected. They're 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 frustrated and all that. And he solves their problem. Sure. And then you have One thing that I have started doing that I think might help um, along that track, Paul, is um, when we close them, we're getting video testimonials. Yeah. Do you the video, Paul? Question number two. Uh, do you ever get the drunk monkey, and how do you handle it? Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely I do, especially it's so easy around the holidays. There's a lot of distractions. Time out and, real um, fast for those people who have not taken bold and want to describe what that drunk monkey means. The, the drunk monkey is my mind telling me to do uh, the opposite of what I intend to do. Yeah, the, the, the vision is that little drunk monkey saying, you know, everyone's calling expired. You're too late. They don't want to list with you. They're just going to do a rent, or right. you've called them too much, or it's too early. That's all that drunk monkey. Yeah, it's the holidays. Nobody's going to list. 
Yeah. Those, those types of things. That's the drunk monkey talking to us. Yes, I get that occasionally. It's a lot less because of conditioning. And over time, what I've learned to do is keep my goals in front of me. And um, I actually have a quote on my wall, and it's just one of my favorite quotes ever. It's, the chief cause of failure and unhappiness is trading what you want most for what you want now. And I look at that quote every day when I come into my prospecting room, um, into my goal-reaching room. And I actually have my environment is set up so that I can set up. I want to reach my goals. I mean, in front of me, I'm looking at my dream board, which has everything that I want on it, um, what I'm going to receive when I do the business. Um, so that's in front of me. And if I choose not to do these, these activities daily, then that in front of me is what I'm giving up. And I'm not interested in giving that up. So that's, that's a quick way for me to drown out the drunk monkey. Good for you. Awesome, awesome stuff. I've got uh, two pages of notes here. As we're wrapping up, what have I not asked you or we've not talked about that we should have? Um, I would say I just briefly touched on environment. I would say your environment is key in the morning. I'll just give you an example. I prospect in a 47 by 60 inch closet. Um, if you ever seen that Disney movie where you know the, the dog goes squirrel, I'm very easily distracted. <laughs> if you can set yourself up to where you have no distractions, in other words, get rid of your cell phone. Don't leave, don't keep it in the off in your office where you're prospecting. No emails open. Nothing that can distract you. Because what I've learned is is that if have you ever been on the phone with someone and you can just tell when they're not giving you all of their attention. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've all been in that spot, you know. It's even been with our significant other or people that we know. You know, they're just maybe watching TV or, or something caught their attention. And you can tell when they're not paying attention to you. Well, if you want success on the phone, you have to absolutely give 100% of your focus and attention to that call. Um, and, and it starts with your environment. If you can eliminate those distractions in your environment, well, you're, you're steps ahead of the game. Fantastic. As we're wrapping up here, I want to make sure everyone knows how to get a hold of you. Uh, this is your correct phone number down here? 421 uh, Yep, that's my cell phone. And then the RamyGroup.com. So if yep. you guys, there's some people out here outside of Orlando. So if you have some Orlando referrals and want an agent who you know is going to take care of them with a great follow-up, Mark's your guy. Give him a call. Throw him a bone. Say thanks for, for helping you get more listings. Uh, next week, I'm sorry, next week I'm off. So in two weeks on the 17th is Heather Lamb. Heather is, you know, speaking of going to other events and meeting people, I met her at Masterminds in Vegas about three years ago. And she did a call with me when I started, probably a year and a half. And love that she gets 7% listen agreement. So she's got a script. And oh, that's a powerful. Just on how to get 7%. She said more than half of her listings, the sellers choose 7%. So she's going to talk about that and how she goes on. So Mark would love to have you back and, and tag team it and bring it in. So that's going to be the 17th. Uh, in January, I'm going to be shifting these calls to 3 o'clock, not 5 o'clock. I feel it's going to be better for some people's schedule. Mark, while I've got you on the phone, who should I be talking to next? Who would be a great guest on this? I don't care where they live. Who should I need to reach out to? Um, if you can get Jeff Quinton on the call, he's a dynamo. Um, Greg Harrelson in South Carolina, they're amazing. Um, Jeff Quinton, you said? Yeah, Jeff Quinton. Okay. Can um, I use your name as a referral? Yeah. And I'll get their information yeah. from you later then. That would be awesome. Yep. And in this marketplace, uh, Mark George is doing some great numbers out of, uh, um, oh gosh, downtown office. Okay. Very good. Love to keep the talent coming. If you guys know that this is recorded, so if you want to see this one and any others, you can take a look at my YouTube page, just my last name, first name, Bosley Rick. So if you go to YouTube.com, Bosley Rick, this one will be up in a couple of days. I have over a dozen more going back from Lori Ballin, J. Michael Manley to some OPs and uh, just really powerful stuff. So 
Mark, I appreciate you adding the arsenal. I learned a lot, and like I said, two to three full pages of notes, and you can make me a better coach with when I talk to my agents here. So I appreciate you much. Rick, thank you kindly. I truly appreciate the opportunity to learn and uh, and serve. Thank you all. My pleasure. Have a great night. Thanks for being on, guys. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye now.